Hello and welcome to On the Other Hoof. We have a big weekend of racing ahead of us, starting uh, tomorrow with Chepstow, where Sada Gruji puts his final touches on a champion chase prep, where he looks at the defender's crown. He's got a tough handicap tomorrow, off top weight, giving a lot of weight to some uh, fairly good handicappers in behind him. We also have Kempton, which stays the main meeting of the day. The Dove Cup, which is usually a supreme trial. The Adonis will have some good juveniles in it. And the Bet Bright Chase, forming known as the Racing Post Chase, as me and you would know it, is a competitive card as well. To go through them with me, we have Adam Webb and Time Forms Callum Middell. Good evening, guys. Good evening. Good evening. That was cheery, Delayed. Adam. That was cheery, Adam. I'm always happy. So. Evening. Uh, good to have you back as well, actually, because you, you missed the last video. Yeah, birthday. it was for family reasons, though, and... The one video I missed, and you get Nick Schofield, which I knew about, and then you get Sam Christian Davis as well. So yeah. well done with that. And I also think we had Jack Sherwood as well, who was in the background. <laughs> in the background. Not 100% sure. But the video I'm, that I'm not is... sure. Ask Nick about that, but I think no, it was Jack Sherwood. We'll get, we'll get it confirmed. Uh, the video that Adam is alluding to there, uh, we had, did our first Cheltenham preview last Tuesday. I assume a few of you have watched it because we've got some fairly good views on that, so thank you very much. But if you haven't watched it, you can go find it on our YouTube page. Uh, it's with Nick Schofield and Sam Twist and Davis, as uh, Adam mentioned. You, it's mostly Nick. We just asked yeah. a few questions to Sam about uh, the new one and how his prep is going ahead of the champion hurdle. Um, oh, we've already got a complaint that, that we're interrupting EastEnders. Oh, EastEnders again. EastEnders. Why is EastEnders on He's so right, much? That's it, right, Bobby Beale has done the murder. You, you know who's murdered the woman now. Let's just forget about it. Move on. I don't care how. I don't care about it. You can re clearly oh, recall the EastEnders anyway. So exactly, you can only watch us once. And yeah. Al Osprey, who do you reckon would be the main? Who, who, who do you reckon would be the murdering type at Osprey? You. I reckon. I reckon. Yeah. I, yeah. I reckon Adam. Oh, Adam. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you. There you go. If, if you're annoyed that we're interrupting EastEnders, then you can uh, tweet to us who you think would be the most likely person to commit murder. It's probably going to be Adam, let's face it. Uh, out of us three, you can also tweet us serious stuff about your fancies and any questions uh, for tomorrow. Any uh, horse racing related question regarding tomorrow's racing would be appreciated. And we'll read out every question at the end of the show. Our first port of call, though, is going to be at Lingfield for the 145. It's the Unibet Cleave Stakes and is an all weather championship fast track qualifier over six furlongs and a yard. It's a competitive race, and I'm sure you're very excited about this to return on the flat. Yes, yes. Isn't it Clever's stake? Clever's, is it? I thought it was Clever's, but I could be yeah. wrong. Um, I don't care. No, neither do I. Uh, <laughs> yeah, obviously this is going to be set up really for the sprint on a uh, on all weather champions day, so it's hard to know really what's going to be fit and what's not going to be fit. Um, on form, Auburn Star, I think you'd, you'd have to have right up there. Got some good all weather form to his name, and uh, uh, he's very much a flower sack. Ran some fantastic races in big handicaps last year. Uh, I don't know if you're running this last year, actually, but yeah, some good good form in, in handicaps as well. Um, off, off decent ways um, on the all-weather. Intransigent has some good all-weather form as well. Start Ended last year in really good form as well, just whether he needs the run. I am going to chance one here. Um, Dogtrot Romeo. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Welcome back, Dogtrot. The name, the name says it all. Um, Foxtrot Romeo is uh, uh, pretty much a bridal monkey and... He only won his second race of his career when winning last time out at Wolverhampton. Uh, obviously, he only had a maiden win to his name previously, but he was very, very smart um, as a three-year-old and looked essentially uh, classic uh, quality, but it's taken a while for him to come to hand. The blinkers, I think, made a huge difference that day. He's also been gelded since his last run, and it could just be that sprinting is the making of this, this horse now. Um, and yeah, I'm willing to give him a chance tomorrow. I, I I do think if he's ready, fit and ready to go, I think he could surprise. So I I will give him a chance. But I'm fully expecting to come in, come there on the snap, find find naff all and finish third. But tomorrow I'm just going to chance him. This could be his track. It won't be the last time we have this. Oh, everything's perfect. I mean, everything is perfect for him tomorrow. But if he gets the pace, the it, strong pace, then everything's perfect. It's not going to be the last time we have this conversation about Lingfield and strong travelling horses, we'll call them. Yeah, he's okay. perfect for it. I mean, Martin Harley put him up essentially saying, you know, you could thrive on your weather if um, if he's up to it. Um, so, yeah, we'll give him a chance. 
Um, I'm going to go for Intransigent, who's a horse that I uh, liked quite a lot at the back end of last year. It was third uh, two outings ago. That was behind uh, Music Theory. No, Prince's Trust, sorry. The <laughs> fine Prince's Trust, not Music Theory. Music, right? music Theory was back in second, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah, music theory was second. He's since been uh, gone to be a decent horse out in Maidan. No, he hasn't. He's disappointed. I thought he's running some good races. No, he ran third and then that's good. Twice. That's good enough in this grade. That's good enough. Princess Trust also got beat last time. Screw you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Screw you. <laughs> but he's since gone on and won a listed race, which automatically qualifies him for the All Weather Championship today. That's my only worry that he's already qualified, so he doesn't need to win this. Uh, so how much Andrew Ball is going to leave on him? is a bit of a question mark to me. 9-2 to two, I think is a fair enough price about him. I do think he's the best horse in the field and saying that he has to give away uh, £3 and even more to some of his rivals uh, here today. Um, as for the rest, I think Hallelujah could go okay if transferring that form over from Kempton. She's been in a uh, decent form uh, lately with mostly with Hayley Turner on board. Obviously she's still banned. Royal Bajan we have as a non-runner. Um, I get your angle on Foxtrot Romeo, who was really impressive the last day, but everything seemed to fall uh, into place for him and everything just went perfectly. So you'd have to have a bit of a gamble back uh, on him backing that up. But for me, I'm going to side with Intransigent very tentatively and hope that he's uh, ready to do himself justice. Uh, Adam? Uh, well, I can understand the argument on Foxtrot Romeo, and I remember putting him up at Newbury, and ever since then I seem to get labelled with the poor thing. Um, <laughs> I, he's not for me tomorrow. The one I'm actually going to go with is Gofar, who is actually one of those that actually has a run under his belt already. He ran two weeks ago, and ran nicely enough in a handicap at Lingfield as well. Ryan Moore is another angle for me. Um, excellent jockey booking, can't really say no more. Well, the flat's back in Ryan Moore. Good old Ryan Moore. I've missed, I've missed Ryan over Christmas, but um, he hasn't missed you. He hasn't. Of course, he never. He doesn't miss anyone. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe his family, but other people he doesn't really care about. Um, <laughs> apart from that, I really hope I'd like to see Alpha Star in a big race. I mean, last year I really wanted him to win a big handicap. He deserved one, and the one time I I really fancied him was in the Air Gold Cup, and he was drawn on the wrong side. So I think he'll he'll come on for this. Um, go far, I think, with the run under his belt, I think will be the one to beat tomorrow. Yeah, no, it's a completely wide open race. It wouldn't surprise you if a, a whole handful of these uh, would play their cards uh, well tomorrow. Two o'clock at Kempton is the next race we're going to be calling at the Bet Bright Charmer Festival Fun. Adonis Juvenile Hurdle, a grade two over two miles. It's usually a fairly good Triumph Hurdle uh, trial. This Activia won it last year before. Uh, bypassing Cheltenham going on to Aintree. Irish Saint, Baby Mix, Zarkandar and, Zol and Soldatino are also names that have won this in the past five years. Soldatino and Zarkandar obviously went on to win the Triumph Hurdle at Cheltenham. Whether there's one in here, Adam, that could go on and do himself justice at Cheltenham, I'm not too sure. I'd agree with that. I mean, some of these I think are here for the potentially to get the mark up for the third winter because there are one or two here that are yet to get marks. I mean, Russian Bolero nearer the bottom. I know he's already got a mark of 126, but I think he needs another run anyway to actually qualify for a mark. Um, Bivou actually favourite. Now, I'm concerned about him tomorrow on the ground. I think he wants better ground than this, and with the amount of rain Kempton's had and the, the going stick reading, I'd be really worried about him. The one that I'd take him on with is all yours, who fell first time out behind stars over the sea at Ludlow but then came back at uh, Taunton a couple of weeks ago and absolutely bolted up. I know it was green late on, but I was really taken by that performance, and I thought then he could potentially be their Fred Winter horse, but with Nichols aiming him here, I'm quite interested to see whether they go for the Triumph after this. Obviously, he did have chart breaker, Paul Nichols, for the Triumph hurdle, but I don't know what's happened to him. Maybe, maybe he, did have, he did have an entry in this, chart he, breaker. Did he? I thought he yeah, didn't. he did. I've didn't see him enter for this, didn't I? Um, I he was, he was, no, he was entered in the Triumph, and then he was withdrawn the other day, so I didn't see him get an entry for this. I saw um, someone tweeting about him getting an entry in this, no prizes for guessing who, but... You no, know, he said he was looking forward to him entered, and then he didn't get an oh, entry, really? and that said person was not happy about it, so... Um, <laughs> He's not happy about anything in fairness, but... Yeah, that's true. He was happy last week talking about Sacco de Rolo, so... <laughs> So the other one that's interesting is Prima Genita, who's come over from Ireland and showed a fair level of form over there. He's now with Dan Skelton, and he's been bought by uh, Frank Gillespie, who's got some... He, he doesn't own many horses, but the horses he owns, they're pretty good animals, so 
he's interesting as well on hurdling debut, but if he, I think he'll run okay, but he may be one for entry in the spring. But all yours, I think, will take the beating here. Yeah, um, Nick and Callum, fairly big fans of Belso, who we saw not there. We we're watching a race in the UK one afternoon, and he won a really nice race at Ludlow, beating a horse called Arabian Revolution, who's uh, since won. He did it quite nicely. I was hurdling debut as well for the small yard of Robert Stevens. Tom O'Brien uh, takes the ride. He's a bit short in the market, and I, th I thought he'd be a bit bigger. But then saying that, this isn't really a uh, vintage race for uh, the Adonis. So he'd have to have a huge chance. It's the way he won uh, at Ludlow in really nice fashion. He'll need to step up, obviously, but there's no reason why he shouldn't do that uh, this afternoon. Bivouac's another interesting one uh, at the top of the race card, but. He, again, he's going to have to step up. He hasn't really shown himself to be top, top class. He's a very good uh, juvenile, but will need to improve uh, somewhere. He's one that Adam mentioned with the Fred Winter. He'd already get in uh, off that mark. So, quite practically. Yeah, exactly. He'd, he'd be high enough in that. So whether the triumph is still the aim uh, for Bivouac, I'm not 100% sure. The others I'm not really that interested in, if I'm perfectly honest. I don't think it's that strong of a race. I'd, I'd be disappointed if Beltor uh, couldn't reproduce what he what he did at Ludlow and I'd be disappointed if he couldn't improve on that if I'm honest and three to one it could be a fair enough price I was hoping for a bit bigger maybe just because it's from a smaller yard and against the likes of Nicky Henderson and Paul Nichols he might be a bit undershadowed but that hasn't happened whatsoever and he is fairly short in the market so I'll put up Beltor it's probably going to be a no a no bet race for me but you're you're very sweet on him right? yeah I like I like Beltor a lot um, echo what you said really about the impression he gave at Ludlow, I mean, he wasn't the best of horses on the flat, but he instantly took jump to jumping uh, particularly well. He's with a good trainer, Robert Stevens, who hasn't got many horses, but the ones he's done, he's already had, he's, he's done really well with, I mean, particularly Modus, I haven't seen that this year, but I still see he's a real stable star. Um, Beltor. Did you not have a winner at Linfield today, Robert Stevens? He did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so stable in form. Um, yeah, so Beltor, I, I, I hope he can he can fulfil that uh, potential that he, he showed. Uh, Ludlow with the form boosted since the Roman Revolution won his first start very impressively at Sandown and won as one well since at Huntingdon. So and Sebastian Beach, who's third, has won as one won as well. And Bivouac, I think is is worth taking on. I, I do agree with Adam. I think these French horses, it's just a bit of a myth that they they want soft ground. I think when they come over here, because they've been constantly on soft on soft ground, that some quite a lot of them actually want decent ground. And, he strikes as that sort of type for me. Um, no, he said last time. No, he said last time out as well that um, he came in and he said the ground was soft enough. And I thought the ground on Trials Day wasn't that bad. I mean, I've seen it worse at Cheltenham this season. Yeah. But he said that he needed better ground. So why they're running here? Oh, obviously I can see why they're running here. But with the amount of rain they've had and the going stick readings, it just completely puts me off into tomorrow. He is another that could be for Aintree, but. The two and a half race at Aintree, where you get a fair bit of weight as well, because he's a four-year-old. I could see him being interested in something like that. Um, yeah, and then all yours, I think, is is very quirky. Yeah, um, yes, yeah. I don't even mention that, but obviously, I remember, I remember seeing that race at Taunton. He was running everywhere, and he wore a hood and a tongue tie. So he's clearly got his quirks. So we'll be taking him on and belt off. It's a definite fancy in this. Yeah, I'd agree with you uh, on belt. Or maybe a race that we haven't got so much of a fancy in is an uh, obscure race to have uh, on Channel 4, the 220 in Newcastle. The bet for us, still Trevor Lodz on. Lucky 15's handicap hurdle over two miles. Brilliant in race to us. Going to stick around uh, for a long time. Uh, Fish has been in decent form this season, but smooth stepper uh, for Sue Smith and Callum Bewley claiming five heads to the market. Adam, have you got any, any real fancy here at all? going to take a chance with one, and I'm only taking a chance with it, because it's a horse that I liked last season, uh, the Soto County, but the only reason I'm saying I'm taking a chance is because of the trainer, I mean, he showed some fair form, I mean, he won a front of the walk, and then he, he showed some fair form, he's still a lot of horses he's been finishing with, I mean, Guha's a, a consistent handicap hurdler, and Irish Cavalier has gone chasing as well, and has done very well, but I just, I don't know with the yard at the minute, it's just... But that's the reason he's tentative. I like the horse, and I think he's well handicapped for 120, but uh, it's, so, it's a tentative selection. There's not much confidence yeah. behind it. I think that's all we're going to get here, tentative selections, because my one's very tentative as well. Tio Vivo is one I'm going to go for. Uh, he bumped into one the last time out. It was a well-back streets of New York. 
who was very, very well backed on that day, and he won by four and a half lengths, but he just found him too good. If you go back before that form, he won a nice enough race at Kelso, and the second there before, also won a uh, Perth before that, so he's steadily improving. The mark is also rising quite significantly. He's off the mark one, two, four tomorrow, which is probably getting towards the higher end of what he what he would like, but he still looks progressive in this field. I don't think you'd have to find too much more to be winning this. It's a, a really confusing race, but we've got some interesting types in alluding to more the types of shrapnel or midnight game. But Tio Vivo for me would be not really not a bet, but he'd be the way I'd side on it if you had a gun to my head. But it's not a race I'd want to get involved in too much. I imagine you love this race. Uh, Tio, yeah, I'd love it. Yeah, um, I love it. Uh, Tio Vivo. That form in Streets of New York is. Works out pretty well. I mean, Streets of New York has really found that form considerably since. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I think he's vulnerable again to a progressive type and smooth stepper, who's obviously the favourite. But I was really impressed with his Weatherby win last time and beating Mr. Gray. I uh, thought his value for a good deal extra was his first try stepping up in trip. Down in trip is a little bit of a worry for me because I did think he improved for it, but. Um, he's clear on ratings, and I think he's he's got a really good chance. Yeah, it's it's not really a race to get too heavily uh, invested in. The race that I think we'll all know a bit more about is the 2:35 at Kent and the Bet Bright Besser Festival betting Pendle novices chase a Grade Two of two miles, four furlongs, and 110 yards. Won last year by border success. Second in that race as well was God's Own, who lines up here once more for Tom George and Paddy Brennan. He's kind of lost his way this. Uh, season, Adam, after starting it off fairly well. He doesn't really look the same horse he did last season, did he? Yeah, it's a, a bit of a disappointment, really. When he run, won the Holden Gold Cup, I thought I sat up and took notes. He beat Ball of Success, he was a horse I really liked, and I can't believe he stayed two mile five, 110 yards, and won the Africa Chase. It was a really good performance last week, but he's gone off the rails since. I mean, his, his Tingle Creek one, he, he made a mistake at the first, and just was never travelling after that, and then he got put in his place last time by Vibrata Valtat and got... Um, in God's own, no, three kingdoms, I beg your pardon. I just don't know about him here, and I think he is worth taking on. The one I'm going to take him on with is a horse that I, I went against last time out in Irish Saint, who, I, as Callum said before the video, that he thinks he wants three miles, but this could really turn into a test of stamina tomorrow with how bad the ground will be. And Irish Saint's got form on really soft ground as well. His run last time, Paul Nichols said that he left something to work on. I know Jatanda Burley was really impressive, but I'd argue that Irish Saint was slightly disappointing last time. I thought he should, he would have finished closer to her. Um, I think Kempton shouldn't be any issue for him, and I think even giving Melodic Rendezvous seven pounds, I think he is the one to beat. Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky little race to sort of decide for your way through, isn't it? Like all of them hold claims, but all of them need to return to their best somewhat. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It's, one of them with... it's like Malolite Rendezvous. I thought he ran well behind Southfield Theatre, but I think he would have finished third if Val Delore hadn't have fallen at the last. So yeah, this uh, we had Nick Schofield on the uh, show earlier this week for the Charlton Previous. Had a quick chat with him earlier on about his two rides tomorrow. He said about Malolite Rendezvous, he'll improve uh, for the X to run. He hopes that the ground's going to ride soft, which is what the official description is at the moment. He thinks he'll. Uh, run a big race. I also asked him about Easter Day that I'll get to later on, and he knows that I fancy that, and he, he said that Melodic Rendezvous was his best chance of the day. Whether he was saying that just to wind me up, I'm not 100% sure, because he did put a very uh, <laughs> winky face with intent after that message, so uh, I'm not sure about that, but for me, I, I probably would side with uh, Melodic Rendezvous. Uh, to be fair, I had a bad experience with Irish Saint getting beaten by Vibrato Valtat uh, three outings ago, but he went on to win at Ascot, and we mentioned on the video as well that he pulled up very quickly that day. Sam Twiston Davis was looking down a lot after the line, suggesting something was uh, bothering Irish Saint on one of his hind legs. But he came back, and we assumed that he was going to be okay. I'm not saying it was anything to do with the injury that he got beat, but he just didn't really seem sort of the same horse. He travelled well enough. You'd expect him uh, to pick up Shitan de Burley and he just didn't really do it or, or go past. I, I don't believe for a second that it wasn't because he didn't, or it's because he didn't stay, because I think he's, he'll stay this trip absolutely fine. So I'd just be tentative with him tomorrow. Personally, God's own, I'd like to see a bit more from him. I'd like to see him return to the kind of form that, that helped him run second here last season. Uh, Melodic Rendezvous is getting seven pounds from those two, and of on hurdling form, he's the best of these uh, over hurdles. He's not 
been 100% over fences, but he's only had a very limited opportunities. He was engaged here over Christmas, and I think there was something wrong with him uh, at that stage. But he won nicely enough beating a horse called Boon Duma, who's frankly that form at, uh, at Banger on his chasing debut. But at Exeter, I don't know, I wasn't too taken by it, personally. It was off a little bit of a break, but Nick said he, he thinks he's going to improve for the run, so I'll take a tentative selection with Melodic Rendezvous, but if all of these three return to their best form, then we could have a brilliant race in our hands. Yeah, I think it's a good little race. Uh, God's Own, I don't know what to make of God's Own, to be honest. I was really <laughs> disappointed by his Kempton run. I know, to be honest, I, um, I did read a report of yeah, it was a, something. Well, an interview with Tom George, and he said he's just been getting stuck in the mud at, um, throughout um, this winter. So I can't seem doing much better if the ground is going to be what it's going to yeah. be like. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm against him tomorrow, and I just got a sneaky feeling about Iris saying that. I know he won is on his debut at Sandown, but I don't think he takes to the track. There's something about Sandown. I don't really think. Like, I was so much more impressed by the way he went through his race when he won at Ascot than when he's run at Sandown. Yeah, no. I and I've just got a feeling maybe he might just he might just prove his put his best foot forward tomorrow. Um, and I'm still not really convinced Melodic Rendezvous is going to be as good over fences than he is over hurdles. So um, I know he's he's getting seven pounds, which I think could be quite big, but I can't have God's own. So yeah, I'll probably go for Ari Saint, even though I do think he needs further in time. He might not yet really need it. In fact, he might not even stay back yet. Um, so I think tomorrow might suit him well. Fair enough. It is a tricky race to get through uh, for a grade two anyway. Usually we'd know uh, the form fairly well of this, but it's horses that have to return uh, to their best form. Next up is the 255 from Newcastle. It's the Betfred Ida, a handicap chase over four miles and one furlong. So stamina is going to be at a premium here. Uh, the last two winners of this, this race are lining up once more, Wick Hill and Portrait King. The market is headed, though, uh, by Shotgun Paddy, who, Adam, Shotgun Paddy has his jumping issues, we'll say. Yeah, I was listening to an interview with Emma Lavelle earlier, and she says he's a great jumper, but only when they go his tempo. If they go too quick for him, he'll throw him jumping errors, like he did in the National Hunt chase, like he did in the Welsh National, but... You can. I actually now think, after watching the classic chase, you can forgive the Welsh national because he got. He was badly left at the start, and he was playing catch up straight away, and he's just walked into the second fence. And Leighton Aspel did the right thing that day. Uh, he ran a much better race in the classic, but off top weight here. Top. I remember comply or die winning this off top weight in um, Can he do it? I think he can do it, but I think he could be susceptible to one or two in the race, especially if he makes jumping errors. Um, Portrait King won this race, as Luke said, a couple of years ago, and it's a horse I, I did like, and what are you two laughing at? Nothing. Nothing. What? Oh, God. It's all about you. Um, it's all about you. It's always about me, isn't it? Price-wise, um, hasn't been kind to you. What's he going for? Go far and Cloudscape. Anyway. <laughs> um, he's had his problems, he's had his injury problems since he won this race and he disappointed in the Scottish National. Now he's been given an entry for the Grand National and his marks should get him in the race. Um, I think he'll go really well here. The other one I do like is Scottswell who won the North Yorkshire National at Catholic last time out and I could see him going out in front, getting into a rhythm and James Reevely got on really well with him. And I think his trainer Harriet Graham really wanted James Reeve back on board, so she's got the services of him again. Um, of the rest, Wick Hill I think will run well, and I think Tom Cannon's here to take the ride because I think he may get the ride at Aintree as well. So, and he deserved that as well. And he won this last year, and he just wants a real stamina test as well. Um, yeah, I think the likely winner would be Portrait King, but I can see Scottwell going really well for a long way. I don't see why Scottswell wouldn't have the form reversed with Herdsman on last time's uh, showing. I can understand, but Scottswell jumped really well out in front, and I could just see him tomorrow, if he gets into a rhythm again like he did last time, I could see him being very hard to head back. Yeah, I just don't think he's going to get as, as, any, as, <laughs> I'll start that again, as easy a time of it. Uh, out in front tomorrow. It's a much trickier race than it was in uh, the North Yorkshire Grand National. I just, I can't see him getting a soft lead tomorrow. And if he does, then he could be dangerous. But still, even if he does get an easy lead out in front, I can see Herzman reversing that form uh, with him. And Herzman's the one that I fancy. I was talking to Gareth Topham 
uh, last week sometime. And uh, Brandy Bryant Hughes got off of him at Catterick after staying on really strongly over three miles and six uh, furlongs. And he just said that this is the perfect horse for uh, an, an Ida and three furlongs more today is going to suit him right down to the ground. The only issue I have with him is the he is prone to make the odd niggly little mistake and that can cost you in a race like this where you're running against much better opposition with the likes of Shotgun Paddy uh, and Whithill who have potential to be a bit better uh, than this grade but I just think at the age of 10 he's very lightly raced and he's only ran 19 times. He used to be with Sue, uh, Sue Smith who's represented in this race by uh, Phil the Power but now with Brian Ellison, cheap pieces were fitted last time, which saw a bit of improvement come around, quite a lot of improvement actually. They're kept on uh, here. 14 to 1, I think, is a really good price off a mark of 130. It's, I think, three pounds above his last winning mark. But if he can continue that improvement that he showed last time out and, and really assert his stamina on top of this race, then I think Herdsman could be a, a really big price at 14. So, um, on to the rest. I think Knock and Rawley will appreciate a real stamina test as well. He's been one that's slowly but surely improving. He's off a mark of 137 tomorrow, but I think 10 to 1 could be a fair each way, each way price about Knock and Rawley just stepping up in trip uh, once more. That could really benefit him. Um, of the rest, you'd have to respect Shotgun Paddy if he jumps. He's by far the best horse in this race on potential wise, but he'll need to show a bit more in the jumping department than he has done recently. Uh, Portrait King is one that I, I wanted to mention. He's had a lot of tough races recently. He's a past winner of this race, but off a mark of 140, he's not getting any younger. I think 7 to 1 is a bit on the short side. He'll stay forever, but as mentioned, he has had a lot of tough races recently, which could start taking their toll on him. But if he does turn up in the same frame of mind as he has been uh, recently, then uh, Portrait King, you'd imagine, will go close. But for me, I'm going to side with Herdsman to Brian Ellison and Brian Hughes. Good, good for you, good for you. Um, Thank you very much. That means a just, lot. I, I like him on form. I'm just worried that the cheek pieces might not have the same effect That's, as they did yeah, first time. Slight worry about. Um, yeah. And if they don't, then he's going to struggle because he 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 doesn't travel when when he when he doesn't feel like it. He just doesn't travel at all, which you can say for the majority of this field. <laughs> um, yeah, shotgun paddy. I mean, he's the class act. So I mean. It, that quote from Laval could be quite significant because against lesser opposition, you know, giving way away to all of them, they they're not going to go hell for leather, are they at all? And he might just outclass them in that respect if he gets into a rhythm. Um, Portrait King goes well in the race before. Whitkill obviously won it last year, but it's a much higher mark. I mean, I, I don't think he's won off this mark before. No, um, he's got his sights firmly set on entry as well this year, hasn't he? So it would yeah, be a prep league, not yeah, sure. good for him. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I like Alpha Victor. Um, I just think this horse has been plotted for this race big time. Um, it's two pound lower than when second in the uh, Midlands National in March to to Gulan. It's got some good form on heavy ground as well, so I'm not particularly worried about that. Um, and return to form over hurdles last time at Weatherby. Uh, in that was actually also in, in back in cheap pieces when well, first time cheap pieces. So. Um, yeah, I, I give him a chance. Yeah, it's it's again another very tricky race. Uh, good luck if you find the winner of it. Uh, personally, but a three ten at Campton is hopefully going to be a bit easier for us to make our way through. It's a sky bet. Dovecut knobs has heard of a great two over two miles. Irving won this last year before disappointing somewhat in the Supreme. We've also had past winners like Forgotten Voice Grametti, Sider Gruji won this, and so did Escort Men before never doing anything ever again. <laughs> but we've got a field of five here where Days of Heaven and Vargo Colonge on the betting, they look to be two to beat here, but Adam, we, well, me and you both think it's a pretty much a one-horse race. Oh, yeah. Oh, you in this as well. Yeah, yeah. We all think this is a one-horse race. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, I'll start by talking about the pace. The Grey Taylor's going to go out in front, and he's a horse I really like, the Grey Taylor, but I don't think he'll win tomorrow because I think he wants better ground and going up in trip, potentially in the spring as well. Um, the one that we all like is Days of Heaven, and I saw him on his debut at Aintree, and he was an absolute nutter. And the same applied at Newbury, and he gave away so much ground that day. And then I saw him at Ludlow, I was there that day with my court, and uh, he didn't want to go down to the start that day, but yet he absolutely bolted up that day. And last time out of Doncaster did the exact same. He's a, he's a work in progress. He's, I was surprised actually he didn't get an entry in something like the Betfair Hurdle, because I thought off his handicap mark he'd have been pretty dangerous in that. 
He's a very talented animal, and I take him to beat Vargo Colonge, who on trials day he travelled really well, and it looked like he dogged it. But then coming back in, Sam Tristan Davis actually made a comment about his breathing, so which is why I think the tongue tie is on in the first place. I just think he needs a breathing op, and they're going to go to the end of the season, and then they'll put him away for some give him a breathing op, and he'll be back out in the autumn. But days of heaven. If he gets down to the start, okay. I think he's definitely the one to beat, and potentially could even go into the supreme after this with a live outsider in it. Yeah, he does. He's one that will need to improve, uh, well, improve a little bit and probably mature a great deal as well. And the, the run at Newbury is the one that sticks out for me. The form, it's one of the ones he didn't win, uh, but the form of it has taken significant boost since. Different gravy won the Sydney Banks at Huntingdon. Uh, earlier this week, Bal has been second in a grade two behind three musketeers, and the horse was back in fourth behind uh, Days of Heaven, who was third. Uh, Seven Nation Army has since boosted that form as well by running uh, creditably. They were a long way clear then of uh, Robbie Rabbit and Coyarba, who. Do you remember what he did at the start of that day? No, what did he do? He didn't veer up and um, yeah, actually nearly refused the race. Like different yeah. race. From that different gravy race. From that story, it sounds about right. He's getting, he's, getting, he's, he's getting better at this racing look. <laughs> he but, liked, uh, I mean, at Ludlow he tried to do it, but he actually went off with them at Ludlow. So he seems like a nutter, but he does seem like a very, very talented nutter. He probably veered, uh, veered badly right and lost many men to the start, and also <laughs> pulled his head off. Yeah. So, so you get that close. I, uh, this horse has got a lot of ability. Oh, yeah. He's just an absolute fruit cake. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. That's why we like it. Fruitcake. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there anything else you want to add about Days of Heaven? Or? Um, no, I just think with Vargo Colons going down in trip, I think it's vulnerable. Or be, you know, it's a decent form of bumpers, but um, he's a horse that does need furlough. I think he is a horse that needs more time, and Days of Heaven has a lot of ability, and I think he might outclass him. Fair enough. Yeah. I, I, well, all three of us conclusively uh, agree on that. We've got to. Give Callum another reason to smile now with a 3.25 at Lingfield. The Coral.co.uk Winter Derby Trial Stakes. This, again, is an all-weather championship day fast-track qualifier. A listed race over a mile and two furlongs. Grandeur uh, won this last year. Plunter, a year before that. Janoub has also won this before going off down to Australia to be uh, very successful to very degrees with or without drugs. Um, Grandeur, though, is the favourite <laughs> this year. Wow. I can't believe it was. He, got, he lost the group one because of it. <laughs> um, apologies. Uh, Grandia again heads the market, but he's not going to have it his own way uh, this year, Adam, because it's a very competitive race in behind him. It is a competitive race. Um, Grandia is a favourite. I can oppose him, actually, tomorrow. Sorry, Luke. He's, uh, is he still no, I agree. A group? Have you still got aspirations of him to win a group or a grade one somewhere in the world this year? No, no. Or have you finally great. lost that dream? Thank God for that. A few um, years ago, yeah, he was. Yeah, a few years ago, you thought, that. yeah. Uh, the one I'm gonna yeah, when I was actually saying it. <laughs> yeah, when you were saying it, and everybody doubted you, and rightly so. Uh, the one I'm going to take. He, he got beat. He got beat narrowly calm by down. Muckadram, okay. giving him calm three down. pounds. It's okay, calm down. The one that's going to take him on, I'm going to take him on with his Cloudscape, who was an interesting horse last year for John Gosden, and he won first time out really impressively. And I remember um, being with Callum on Guinea saying it was his nap that day, and he told me he couldn't see his feet, and he was really keen and got beat. Uh, he then <laughs> he ran some fair races after that. I mean, he was fourth behind Canic Chase at Royal Ascot, and he was fourth at Goodwood behind Snow Sky. And the form of that, I mean, I think the Royal Ascot race is worked out better than the Goodwood race, personally. But the first time Lincoln's is really interesting for me. And also the booking Van Gerwer at Zany. I think it's the first ride for John Gosden as well. Could be wrong there, but I think it is. And I just think it could be right to catch him fresh. Uh, and, you know, Grandisar, well, Grandisar is uh, interesting. I mean, he, he, he likes to put his head in front on the line. He's a difficult ride. And if Martin Harley can ride that to perfection, he is a danger. Uh, apart from that, I know, you, I know Callum wants what about Carlo. I'm surprised they're here. I, I actually thought potentially early season they could go for a big handicap with him before stepping up into listed company. So I'm interested that they've come here already with him. But Cloudscape's quite a confident selection here. Uh, yeah, I think what about Carlos to be more of a prep for something. I'm not actually sure. I don't know if he got a Lincoln entry. 
So it might be a link, Lincoln, Lincoln esque. Um, yeah, we'll see if he has got a link. Uh, also, in terms of Andrea Zini, yeah, he's got an interesting link. Yeah. So. Um, Andrea Zini, do you think Gosden go to Gosden? Get the job there because it could be interesting. That I mean, this was I. I'm seen. I looked at the last five years. I don't. He's not ridden for him, so he mustn't have ridden, ridden okay. for Gosden before. So he's turned about of nowhere to to ride a John Gosden horse. Do you not think there might be something there? Yeah, I think Andrea said he might need a new job. He might do. <laughs> um, no, personally, no. Um, I, I'm going to side with Grandia. I, I do think it's a very tough race. Uh, Grendisar, as Adam mentioned, is a bit of an enigma. Uh, it wasn't the strongest of races he won last time out, but to his credit, he did it well, and he sort of answered uh, a lot of critics that day, including myself. He does have to do it at a much higher level, though. He's got a lot of twos beside his name, which does put you off, especially you see the way that he travels through a race. He goes very strongly and doesn't overly find all that much, but... If he runs his race, he'll, he'll be close enough. He'll probably be one for the place for anyway. I think I can't see him being out of the places. Um, Cloudscape, I completely get your point on uh, Adam. Blinker, first time, I think, really could see a bit of improvement in him. I assume you're going to be sweet on Cloudscape as well. No, I'm not, to be honest. I'm not really keen on the Blinkers. I um, thought he looked a bit slow at times last year. Um, That's what I thought. That's why I thought the Blinkers would help him. Yeah, <laughs> but... It might do. I'm not really convinced. I mean, I'm certainly not convinced by price-wise. I think it's going to be a Group 1 horse by yeah. the end of the year. What? Um, that's a quote as well. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> genuinely a quote. Wow. Um, I wouldn't believe that. Um, I just think tomorrow, in a race which I can see being pretty slowly run, um, he could be vulnerable. I, yeah. I, I don't have a strong fancy at all in this. I mean, Ron Jill might just about outclass them, but... I, wouldn't be taking two because I think it's going to be quite no, close. I think it'll be more of a case that Grunge is better positioned than the rest because we know Grunge is going to be handy. Who's going to be the, the pacemaker? Maverick Wave and Lamar. Yeah, Lamar, Lamar, will be Lamar will be up there. Ansar will be up there. What about Carlo? I'd expect to be up there. Right. But nothing. I can't imagine them going overly strong. If you, if you look at the pace as well, it's going to be coming from wide. Maverick Wave and Lamar will have to break well. Grunge is ideally drawn. Yeah, but if they're going to go slow, I mean, they'll sort themselves out yeah. pretty quickly. That's not yeah. a worry. Um, Grendesar will go backwards, you'd imagine. Cloudscape. Grendesar will go backwards, though, yeah. Actually, so. yeah. Um, that, that's the one. That's the one thing we do know. Grandio, I think, will just about outclass him. Yeah. But um, I wouldn't want to take two to one. Grendesar will come there tanking, and who knows? Who knows what he finds off the bridle? <laughs> because I mean, he's he's improving though. He is actually yeah. improving. He's putting up better and better performances, but. The horse just isn't a battler, and he isn't a horse that you want to take in a race where he's likely going to be slowly run. Maverick Wave, I just worry if he's good enough, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, he's got to step up a lot. I mean, he did have the run of the race when he beat um, Razor Wind. Get it, Razor Wind's a pretty decent horse, but this requires another step up, and I don't think he's got it in him. Or be he gets a bit of weight from, from a couple of his main rivals. Just about going for Grand Away. Uh, no, you're not. Grand Grand Away. Grand 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 Away. Well, Grand Away is back in France now. It's like that doesn't sound right. <laughs> I've made a boo boo here. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with Grand I Whether I back Grand I'm not 100% sure on that. I do think, I agree with Callum that his price is a bit short uh, at 2 to 1, but. I think he's the best horse in the field, and he could, he should take a lot of beating tomorrow, uh, providing all things go well from the stalls. Uh, from stall three, it shouldn't really uh, be a worry, and I'm happy to see Ryan Moore back riding in this country, and mainly riding back on Grand Jeu. We go to Chepstow, though, for the 3.35, for the Rifles Handicap Chase, supporting care for casualties uh, for the Bombay Hunt Cup. Over two miles and 110 yards, only four runners here, but an intriguing one, Adam, inside a Gruji, who puts his last finishing touches on his champion chase prep. I only just realised two minutes ago that this was on Channel 4. I obviously had looked at the race, but I didn't realise that Channel 4 got it. It's a fair play to them for getting it. Uh, Side of Gruji, well, I, I'm regretting that I backed him for the champion chase after Newbury. He didn't jump a fence that day. I was not impressed, and I thought he was beat at the time when he came down. Mr. Moore won really well, but I thought he was in a bit of trouble that day, especially the way he walked through the fourth last and then the third last. But it's similar to what Denman did in the Aeon a couple of years ago, but I don't know. He could win, but I, I it's a no-bet race, but I'd like to see Sai the Gruji win. 
partly for the, for the anti-post bet and partly because I'd like to see him in the champion chase as well because we need the, oh, the stars in the race. I mean, we've got Sprinter Sacra. We've got all the reports are coming out about him that he's schooling well and that Nicky's happy where he is with him. But we need we need opposition, obviously, and I, I'd like to see Sai the Gruji win. But if he doesn't perform or his jumping doesn't hold up, Grey Gold could be a really good bet at 7-2 to two with Tom Stewart and Ron Bard. He goes really well on soft ground and his record is, is really impressive and he's a horse that I, I've got a little soft spot for. I mean, he ran in the Victor Chandler last time out, the Clarence House, I beg your pardon, not the Victor Chandler anymore, where he was outclassed, but he picked up some prize money. And I can see him being the main threat if Sider Grigi doesn't jump well. Far West, I'm, I'm actually not convinced he's a chaser. He's just not impressed me over his large obstacles. And Mr. Grez probably isn't good enough and wants further. Go on, Mr. Grez. It's really awful, isn't it? That was cliff off, yeah. I, I do agree with your worries about Sider Grigi. Uh, he jumped appallingly uh, on his comeback at uh, Chepstow. He, he travelled okay. Uh, you got the feeling that Jamie Moore wasn't really too happy with him. He was probably travelling the best that he had throughout the whole race when he came down. Saying that, I still don't think he'd have beaten Mr. Moore because he won very impressively. But they were too... It, it was very uncharacteristic the way that he jumped. When he does make mistakes, usually they're completely different to the type that he was making uh, on his reappearance at Newbury. And I spoke to Jamie Moore as part of a Radio Yorkshire Cheltenham preview, and he said that he can be no well, he has been known in the past to uh, make mistakes on his comeback run. So it could just be a bit of ring rustiness. Hopefully, it is that. Whether it's the smartest move running in a race like this, giving a stone and a halfway to good rivals on what's undoubtedly going to be very soft ground, so close to Cheltenham, we'll see in due course. But I hope he wins tomorrow. I'm not sure if he will. I'm not I, I'm not really willing to put one up against him, if I'm perfectly honest. I think Far West, it's, it's notable that Jack Sherwood's on claiming five, so Far West is going to have a very, very low weight. I've been moderately impressed with him over fences. I thought he'd do a lot better, if I'm perfectly honest. Grey Gold, I think, will need to improve again. He's not getting any younger. Mr. Grez is here for four place prize money, which is uh, fair enough, because that's over a £1,000 for finishing fourth, but I hope Sider Grugy wins, but giving a stone away to these two, we'll call it, is, isn't going to be an easy task. Um, no bet race for me, I imagine it's no bet race for Yeah, no, no bet race, I would like to see Sider Grugy pop up and show his best, but I do worry about it, I really do. Um, I don't know what else to say than that, and Grey Gold, I'll be, I mean, to form a th I'd be very surprised if Grey Gold isn't the one to take full advantage. I mean, very close second in this race last year. Goes well at Chepstow. Just looks way more convincing than Far West. So, um, 7 to 2 actually could look a good price, but I don't want to oppose Sider Grigi because I just, I, I really would like to see him back to his best. Yeah, yeah no, I completely agree with that. The groundwork won't pose a problem for him at all. And uh, it's a soft to heavier thing tomorrow at the moment at Chepstow. Um, the last port of call today. Of nine, we finally got through it. Three forty-five at Kempton, the Bet Right Chase, formerly known as the Racing Post Chase, uh, to me and you guys. The Grade Three Handicap Chase over three miles. It's soft enough ground tomorrow at Kempton, but we were going through this race earlier, and we could come up with more horses who have solid reasons why they can't win than ones why they can win. Pretty much, if that, yeah. It pretty much sums the race up, I think. Um. There's only two I like in it, to be honest, and one appeals considerably more than anything else, and it's obviously the favourite Easter day, <laughs> who, yes, he fell last time at, at, at Cheltenham. I, well, I know with him, we're both convinced he went for the wrong race. Um, he should have gone for the, for the sky bet. Because mm. um, he wants three miles, but he, he could just be an absolute handicap block, whereas the majority of these either have got other aims or are not handicap blocks. Um. Yeah, I. <laughs> I think I don't with, know what it's, to, it's to say really. I just I, up to three miles on on softish ground. I think he could be much better than these. And yeah. Fox appeal. I'm sure, Adam will go for it again. Nope. No. Whoa. No. Bloody hell. Don't think he. Don't think he wants three miles, and he's not exactly well handicapped. Well, he's, I, I, yeah, I, I would agree with that, and he's, he, yeah, he, he doesn't deserve to be that close in the market. Rocky Creek will obviously have other reins. Mainly, I assume the national, the rev. This isn't Sandown. It's got no chance. Uh, <laughs> he, he wins. <laughs> Tap Knight is the biggest hound going. 
Chartra maybe. Um, Chartra, I like the horse. Yeah, he will give a ball show. I'm sure of that. Um, I just maybe think he wants a little bit better ground now. When, I've seen when he's been better, he's been on slightly better ground and really soft ground. One of the price I thought was overpriced was Balin Farrig. Um, just thought that Kempton win in December was quite was quite a good performance, even though he did try and dog it at the end. Um, I don't really think he finds much. He's a strong travelling horse. He is a strong travelling horse. He, 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 does, he does jump very well. That's his main attribute. Yeah, but he doesn't do much in front. So um, the Ascot run that you can easily forget. He made a really bad mistake in the um, at one point. Um, so I think you can you can probably uh, back up to three miles. I think you can forget that last run. So sixteen to one each way. I'd, I'd rather take on him than the majority of the field. But Easter Day. I think he wins. I really yeah. do. I think it's a really good bet. Yeah, it's, and I mentioned earlier that I had a very, very brief chat with Nick Schofield. He said about Easter Day, he was travelling really well at Cheltenham last time when he fell. He's scored well since, and he's still very nicely weighted. I think that pretty much covers all areas. I don't think it was his fault, the fall at Cheltenham. Little John was in front of him that day, and just to the right, he came across him to the, and all but took him out. If he was half a length further forward then he would have been taken out by Little John but I think he was just put off by that because he did seem to jump a bit offline uh, on that occasion and he, he just didn't really get the landing gear down I just think he might have been a bit unsighted by Little John's jump usually on the whole he's a very good jumper but he's very well handicapped off a mark of 142 and you may remember this is a completely different tune that I'm saying about yesterday because I've never been one of his biggest fans whatsoever but he really impressed me at, Ch at Cheltenham with the way he travelled I didn't think he was a strong travelling horse whatsoever, but I got him completely wrong, and I'm sure it's not the last time I'm going to get a horse as wrong as that, but 92 odd tomorrow I think is tremendous value. I think he's so well handicapped, especially in a field like this where, as Callum mentioned, they're either too badly handicapped or they've got different aims for later on this season. So I think Easter Day is a really, really good betting proposition tomorrow for Paul Nichols and Nick Schofields. Um, each way, I, I would agree with Callum about uh, Ballon Varig, actually. I don't I can't really see too much else getting into this. I'm a bit confused as to why they've stepped Rajdani Express up in trip when he's an absolute nutcase over two and a half miles. They, <laughs> they, they, they want to get him qualified for a particular race that's running seven weeks' time. That's, and he they, wouldn't they, stay. What do you need to do to do that? Finish in the first four. Oh, good luck. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> just get him qualified for a race that he definitely won't stay in. <laughs> I mean, it's just ridiculous. Rastani Express will pull way too hard for Sam Wedekind, and it's it's a shame because I really do like the horse. He ran really well in the Ryanair last year, but three miles, come on, he won't stay that. Um, <laughs> uh, good luck to a certain Mr. Bell with the Rainbow Hunter. I, I'm sure tomorrow won't be the day for him. Uh, he'll be focused uh, more at that certain race in seven weeks' time. But I, I, I honestly, I I won't back anything other than Easter today. He'll be one of the strongest bets of the day. Uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, we're going to make it a clean sweep for East today, Adam? He's your likely winner. I will definitely say that. I am going to put something up at a bigger price as well, but the thing that's a blessing in disguise, he fell at the third last, because if he'd have fallen at the second last one, travelling like the winner, he'd have been put up by the handicapper, so blessings in disguise, and he probably did go for the wrong race, but I think he would have won that handicap really comfortably. Yeah. I'm going to make a note about that handicap as well, tap night. I can't have here. He is just. Oh God, I was wondering where you were going with that. Then. No, 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 no. What I'm going to say is, is that handicap form for me is so. Cheltenham, you can normally rely on to have good handicap form, but that race is just horrifically bad for me. And I, I wouldn't touch. If you look at that race and look at the form of it, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole anyway. Apart from me today, he was going really well when he came down and looked the likely winner. Um, yeah, just that race would just avoid and. I know he's got headgear on, but I just it's like last time everyone was like, oh, he's an obvious eye catcher. No, he's not. He did this a year ago. And then look what he did. He's dropped a stone in the weight. So he's, oh, I couldn't have tap night. He'll probably go and win tomorrow now. It is and interesting. It's really pieces, annoyed me. I'm surprised that Cheap Pieces has, has never, yeah. um, has never, they've never tried it one well before. Yeah, but I just still couldn't have him. Uh, Fox Appeal, Callum, uh, uh, it seems to be my cliff horse, but he's not anymore. I, I've, I've moved myself away from that cliff. I don't think three miles on heavy ground is really what he wants. Rocky Creek's here for a Grand National prep, and I think he'll run well to a point and then probably blow up. I don't know what the excuse was in the Hennessy, because he just didn't travel that day. I don't know what 
emerge from that, but he's been trained for Aintree. Uh, Larev is a sand down horse and I don't think really wants the ground of testing. Chotra is interesting. The one that I do like, and I'm following this horse off the cliff, is Tenor Niveny. He's been crying out for three miles because he got outpaced at a crucial time at Ascot last time out, and that was where I thought, hang on a minute, he needs three miles, not the Burn Group plate. So, And he was entered in the three mile handicap at the festival as well. So I'd like to see him go well here, but I do think Easter Day is the one to beat. Oh, and I'd like to see Cosby Judge run well for the National. I don't, I don't think he'll win, but I like to see him run well. <laughs> oh, <Thomas. Go> on. <laughs> Alan. Ready? I win. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Callum's preparing his bets for tomorrow while Adam right. was uh, going on. Uh, that concludes uh, previews for uh, tomorrow's Channel 4 action. It's your very last chance then to get your questions in uh, for tonight's show. Questions or fancies, we may add at that anything that you want to mention for tomorrow. You can tweet us at on the other hoof. We're going to start with the first questions that have been sent in now. Um, Oh, no. <laughs> I'm trying to work out. I'm trying, it's not now. It's in half a minute when I work out which the first question is. Scroll down. Um, Chris Heath wanted to know our opinions of his um four that he put up for um on the. He gave them us the other day after the video, and we didn't reply. So I said we'd reply in the video. I don't remember them. So yeah, got a great chance. I'll find them. Um, I don't, I don't, we'll, we'll, I try find, we'll, we'll try and find them in a second. Um, okay. Kyle Wills said, uh, Kyle Wills got in touch again. Hi, Kyle. Uh, enjoy the pancake preview the other night. Quality. Uh, who does the panel think will have the most winners, Rich Ritchie or Jigginstown at the festival? Hmm. Rich Ritchie. Probably Rich Ritchie. A draw. Isn't it? A draw. <laughs> I'm messing. Rich Ritchie. Uh, Ritchie. Uh, Jigginstown have got Don Poli. That's 1 0. Road to Riches. Road to Riches. Oh, no. Fahin and Vitor for Rich Ritchie. That's 2 1. And just say? No. Not his, Are you on crack? No. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I really, I really want them to bring Wada Franck over for the um for the Martin Pipe because I think he'd have a huge chance in that. Yeah, can't. But they Danny probably Powell, won't. Yeah, for Rich Ritchie. I don't know why I thought he was so soon. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, That's a good one. A couple of singing moments tonight. I'd, I'd go Rich Ritchie out of uh, them too. He also, uh, Kai also follows up saying, Do Van Faheen, Underso, Annie Power, which one would the panel leave out if you were doing a treble on day one? Um, Do Van. Yeah, I'd leave Do Van out, yeah, actually. Van. What is there to beat him? I don't know. I, 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 personally, I think all four will win. Maybe, it's really maybe, boring. Maybe because, like, yeah, I just don't fan, I, I just don't see the other three getting beat, especially yeah. if Annie Power turns up. Yeah, if, if Annie Power gets there, I think you can pretty much assume she's going to be 110%. I'm really annoying myself. There we go. <laughs> it's okay. You can redeem yourself. You've still got time. You've still got time. Uh, Richard Cook, you, you you asked these questions, I think, after uh, we finished the preview the other night. But asked, you've asked them again. We answered them tonight. No mention of Red Savola for the World Hurdle. Uh, gave weight to Safford Road Cheltenham and lost narrowly. Um, Safford is going to be a better horse on good ground, isn't he? 100%. Um, Red is a much and so is Zark so is Zarkanda. Yeah, and he, he went on and said and defeated Zarkanda earlier on this season. Yeah, but Zark Zarkanda, I think shaped like a better horse on that day. Personally, yeah. but my personal view on Zarkanda that day is that he couldn't see Red Savola coming back at him because of the blinkers. Um, whether he really needs the blinkers, I'm not 100 percent sure. But that's the reason I thought he got beat because he was coming back at him uh, again at the line. Uh, that's my it, personal opinion. I also think with Red Civil, a truly run three miles around Cheltenham is not his bag. And Daryl Jacob even said on Racing UK after he won at Ascot, he can't get him to have a breather because he needs a breather mid-race. And in the world hurdle, I know you're coming down the hill, but you still can't get a breather into them. Um, can I quickly just talk about the world hurdle? 30 seconds. Because um, I wasn't on the other day. Paul Nichols reverse forecast, Safi and Zarkander. Um, at the pair, I think Saturday there is the one to beat. There you go. Ooh, 30 seconds. No, I can no, add no, no, his extra time. Oh, sorry, sorry. You, you, said, you said 30 seconds. Keep going. Right, and Rock and Ruby won't no. stay. Beat that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you would never uh, beat that. Um, <laughs> similar. I'm just looking, obviously, if you've beaten in the last two world hurdles. Yeah, I'm placed in them. He's, he's not the same horse. He's a horse that needs heavy ground. I mean, it's just simple as that. Um, yeah. Obviously, it wasn't. It wasn't desperately heavy at, at Ascot, but I just, do, I just think he's better on it. I, I, I don't see him. No. I, I mean, I'd be very surprised if both of them don't 
confirm slash overturn form at, in the world Cup. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, Jeff Handley got in touch. Good evening, Jeff. Uh, Jim Colossi's got an interesting runner at Fairy House. Spring Hill, 25 to 1 for the Grand National, but trainer without a win since March, over 58 runs. Is that true? Yeah. Jim, Jim Colossi hasn't had a winner since the March. Same, hang on a minute. The same happened last year, remember? And yeah, that's was going to And he had two from two. Spring yeah, I'm thinking Spring Hill might not put in my Goliath tomorrow now. Yeah, Spring Hill will probably need to uh, run. And yeah, I know that... There is that, but yeah, I, no, I agree with you, Adam. I think Spring Hill will need to run. And is it your main fancy for the national, Callum? I don't know. I, I'm really worried he won't stay. Um, he doesn't look as far as stay to me. I he, think he'll travel really strongly. I could see him get into the Melling Road, looking the likely winner, yeah, and then he'll yeah. stop. I yeah, I, I really can. I mean, the first time that horse caught my eye was when he was behind Alvarado, uh, November 2013, the Paddy Power meeting. And he I came there that. absolutely tanking and stopped really quickly as soon as he went over three miles, three miles one. That's my worry. I just do see him staying. But to be fair you know, to the um, quality of horses, to be fair to Jim's horses at the time, they weren't running well. They were They had something up with them. And in the bet three six five, he actually stayed on up the hill, so that could be a maybe an optimistic thought. But uh, you think I, I, I do think three miles two is is an absolute maximum. I just think you get caught out mm. personally. It'll be inter um, interesting to see how he runs uh, tomorrow. Nonetheless, Sam Lovell has tweeted a midnight game overpriced at twenties in the two twenty at Newcastle. Um, I I could not advise anyone to have a bet in that race if I'm perfectly <laughs> honest. Yeah, at his best he have a squeak, but I'm not 100 percent sure about that. But good luck if you uh, invest anyway. QJ has got in touch saying, has Shotgun Paddy been extremely well treated by the handicapper? And is this a weak Adonis hurdle? Obviously two completely unrelated points. The Adonis, uh, the Adonis I don't think it's weak. It's just I with do. how strong is but in time, strong? I'm saying. Like, uh, uh, the winner is ever strong. I think the Adonis is a poor renewal this year, personally. Hmm. It, I think it, it, long it, term it, it'll work out. Long term it, we'll look at it yeah, and probably be like, oh, that's that, bad. That's, you, you, right, it, it, at the time of, of saying this, I don't think there'll be many Triumph Hurdle or, or good oh, juveniles no, no, coming no, out no, of this. No. Some of them will um, be nicely handicapped next year when yeah. they go with handicapping, definitely. Yeah, and Shotgun Paddy, I don't think he's been well treated by the handicap because he keeps making mistakes and not running his race so the thing is off 147 he'd have to he run was... to lock in the 150s to be winning this and that's knocking on the door of graded chaser and I'm not I think he's a very good staying handicapper don't get me wrong but he's it... just yeah if he puts it all together tomorrow he should win but and then, and then he should go to Aintree where he can just walk through every fence and he'll be fine so yeah but you can do that Aintree yeah um... that's what I'm saying <laughs> Uh, Patty Fuller has had a go at us for, for being on at the same time as EastEnders. Uh, personally, I think that's your fault for being a watcher of EastEnders. And then she had a guess of them who'd be the likely murderer out of us three. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Adam is the murderer. Yeah, I killed Lucy with, Beatle. With the high-pitched Gauss <laughs> accent in, in, uh, in the games room. Oh. I was turning it into Cluedo, sorry. Uh, turning it into Cluedo? Oh, God. Might have been something. Then. <laughs> yeah, Jeff Hanley's uh, tweeted in again about Shotgun Paddy this time. Was it Warwick Races uh, and Shotgun Paddy, well, made a note of Shotgun Paddy, travelled strongly until he hit three out, still unexposed. Uh, yeah, it, again, it's just he has to put it all together. Mm. He like, will he, do, he, one of these days. Yeah, one day, he'll be very good. But, yeah. Uh, I, said to, I said to you, Luke, when the, when the national entries came out, I was surprised that he was a hundreds on bet there. Not that I'd back him, but I thought he was a bit of a silly price considering his form in staying chases. If you remember yeah, saying yeah, that to you. I agree with that, but he does need to, to scrap off his jumping yes. considerably. Um, Dave Weldon has tweeted in, quite keen on Kate Caster tomorrow. Below par run at Ludlow behind Bell Tour last time out, 20 to 1. You you were quite keen on Kate Caster. I like this horse on the flat a lot. Um, because of, often he was on good ground and he was crying out for a bit of cut. So I was quite, I was actually not too uh, unhappy to see him go hurdling because I think he might, he might, he might take to it really well in time. But I just think he needs a bit more time at it. Yeah. I was a little bit disappointed by how he ran at um, 
Badly. Yeah, although in time that could work out to be a pretty nice yeah, race. Yeah, sure, I, I, it was definitely. It, it's, a, it's a nice race now, actually, saying mm. that. But, um, Jeff Andley back in. I do like Melodic Rendezvous at Kempton, but the stable are without a win in 44 runs. That's worrying. Uh, mm. Yeah, again, it's, it's another thing. Have they had a chance to. Um, how many chances have been outstanding out yeah. of those lot, you know? Yeah. Um, well, Trenholm, a question about Cheltenham. Am I the only one that think Jezki has an excellent chance of retaining his crown? Much rather be on him at sixes than the new one at threes. P.S. I'm not an idiot. I backed Faheen anti-post a few months ago. Well done with that. Um, <laughs> I, th I was going to say, you've kind, of, you've kind of left a considerable part of that race out of there, but then you redeem yourself with Faheen. Um, I think Jeski represents the each way value if you if you do back as low as he, uh, each way at six to one. Um, I, I don't see them three not being the first three home. If I'm perfectly honest, uh, I, I'd rather have. I don't know. Would you rather have Jeski at sixes than a new one at threes? I wouldn't. Yeah, I would. I, I wouldn't. Um, cool. I think new one. I said this on the on the video the other day that I think he's a more complete package now. And although I wasn't to the theory that he should have beaten him last year. I think he would be well now because I don't think Jetski's improved. And also, a worry about Jetski for me genuinely is having McCoy on instead of Geraghty. Like mm. genuinely, I think that is detrimental to his chances. And that's no disrespect, but he's disrespect to McCoy. Sorry, McCoy. But no, um, he's a big watch for this show. He's well. been he is, yeah. for two months. How dare you? But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just think Fourteen's going to be too good, and I think New One is by far his best challenger. And, I think they've already shown form very close, if not better, to what Jetski showed in last year's champion hurdle. Yeah, no, I, you can you can bet your bottom dollar that Jetski's going to be better than he's shown all season. Yeah, Fourteen's already got higher time form rating than what Jetski's got for his champion hurdle. Yeah, I, I, I just think it's a case of Fahim turning up. If uh, <laughs> touch wood, nothing goes wrong, but that's the only thing that can beat him on the day, in my mind. Um, Phil Dinsdale was tweeted in too. Tweets. One of them just said Don Cossack, and the other one says Stone Cold. That's the one he was talking about. Rich Ritchie versus Jiggenstown. Uh, the two winners that Jiggenstown could have against uh, Ritchie. So, yeah, Don Cossack, I'd say. Is Stone Cold coming over for the festival? I don't know. Yeah, there's I'm not so sure. many of them. Well, Jiggenstown are only going to send two for the bumper. They don't normally send horses over for the jump and bumper, but they've relaxed that rule this year. I don't know what they're going to send over. Willie Mullins has got like I think he's got half of Ireland for the bumper, so whatever yeah. he sent. <laughs> Although we were That's sent it. a question about Moon Racer, and it wasn't it didn't come up on the under other hoof account because it was a private account. Somebody asked our views on Moon Racer and what we think of him. It's a long time to be off. Yeah, but the thing is, I think they've had this in mind. So yeah, he was really impressive. He really, he really was impressive in October. I can understand that, but. As a creditable threat to the Irish, I think he is one, definitely. Yeah, he beats some was, nice yeah, horses in that bumper. It wouldn't be my fancy, personally. Um, Andrew Humphrey, oh. Shane's Hill and Supreme, yay or nay? Uh, nay. Is he going for the Supreme? Yes, yeah, he is. Yeah, he is, because Graham Wiley's got Nichols Canyon in Neptune, and yeah. I wanted Nichols Canyon in the Supreme, because I thought, go and make all the running. But, yeah, oh, well. Um, I don't like the, the way Shane's Hill's jumped so far, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, yeah, I, I don't think he's a natural over hurdles. Um, he's I'm sure he'll be way down the pecking order for me. Yeah, I'm sure. Nice. I'm sure he'll be schooled extensively to get that out of his system. But he hasn't been the most fluent over hurdles in my mind. I think Willie Miner said he had a problem as well mid-season. Yes, he did. He's he's had a niggle and he's yeah. He's nothing, nothing serious. It, it was a, yeah. something small, but it just kept him out of training for a couple of days. Mm. So um, he's also he's also flatbread as well, which. I don't think helps. Yeah. Well, so. I, I, I couldn't have Shane's on my mind for the Supreme, to be perfectly honest. But good luck if that's what you fancy. Um, Hattie Fuller has apologised to Adam. He says, uh, she, sorry. Oops. Hey, says, hey. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> getting, your, getting your genders mixed up. I think I know, I, I think I know who the uh, on the other hoof member that's most likely to get murdered is now. Um... <laughs> She says, sorry, Adam, but I'm with you on Scottswell tomorrow. Thank you. Well, well, it might be Luke that's the murderer now, I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm the murderee. Oh, bless. Yeah. Rest in peace. 
yeah, sleep with one eye open after that. And Phil Dinsdale ends it with Road to Riches, who you did mention in that competition, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, still think Rich Richie wins it, uh, personally. But that's all the questions we've got for tonight. Um, uh, I've got, I've got uh, Chris Heath's horses from the other right. day. Okay, so for the champion chase, we've got Cider Grugy and Hidden Cyclone. Cider Grugy depends on tomorrow. Hidden Cyclone is interesting, but I don't think he's good enough to win a champion chase. Uh, champion hurdle, you got Hurricane Fly, who needs soft okay. ground. <laughs> <laughs> He's in trouble. Uh, we just got, I just got a tweet from Hattie and on, the, on the other hoof account saying, excuse me in capital letters. But no exclamation mark, which may be okay. taking it down a little bit. I'm You're really sorry. Well done, yeah. Luke. Many clouds for the Gold Cup um, <laughs> and Jetson for the World Hurdle now. Somebody tweeted in the other night saying that they wouldn't back Jetson in a handicap of 145 FFS. So, I don't think Jetson will be good enough. Many clouds, I think... I don't know about many clouds. I just think he wants soft ground. He's done nothing wrong all year, but I keep doubting him. and He proves me wrong all the time, so I'll probably do it again. Is that it? Yeah? Yeah, That's they're the horses. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think we spoke about most of them on the show the other night. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, that's, I don't think we've got the chance to answer them uh, the other night. Uh, nap time, though. Adam, you want to Oh, God. Um, I'm going to go with Days of Heaven. Days of Heaven. Right. Fair that's fair enough. Uh, I fancy Days of Heaven as well. Uh, nap, I'm going to go for Easter Day in the Beth Bright Chase. Uh, I think he's absolute certain. Yeah, I do like Easter Day. I do like Easter Day. I would nap it, but I don't know if it belts or... Beltor in the other. It's a Beltor. Ah! Ah, oh, I should have put that on my blog. That would have been a great title. Oh, yeah, she put it up. No, I, I, sh I didn't put Beltor on, but I should have put him on just for the title. Yeah. Uh, I, I chose something else. Well, let, let's not mention last week's naps because you two had winners, and I was really, really sweet on our page to Len. I nearly changed my mind, but didn't because I said mountainous all week, and usually I change my mind, it goes wrong, but this time I should have changed my mind because our page to Len won very nicely. Beating oh, the timer. Two. Shut up. I'm not after time here. I, I said on the video that our pace the would beat team for two. Even yeah. worse was a couple of hours after the video and realising that opening batsman was in blinkers. Because if I'd have seen that, I would have probably napped him. So, ugh. oh well. Well, I mean, my... good, good work. But also, before we go, um, I'd like to congratulate um, a regular watcher of the show, Tim Devine and his wife Helen on the birth of their baby daughter, Amber. So many congratulations from myself. Yeah. And, and yeah. Seconded. Well done, Tim. Good <laughs> 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 and congratulations to you guys. That's a nice uh, way to end the video on this week. We will give details. I'm not sure if we've got another Cheltenham preview lined up uh, for next week. We will give details of that on our Twitter account, at on the other who You can follow us on there, and you will get all the updates from Saturday's videos and also Cheltenham previews that are coming up, and also any guests that we may have on. You can also subscribe to our channel by clicking something that says subscribe around this box that you're watching it in. Uh, currently, you'll then get told about every single video that we upload and when we upload it, so you can watch it at your convenience. But until next week, when we might be doing a Cheltenham preview, we're not 100% sure yet. We will see you then. Thank you very much for watching tonight. Good luck tomorrow. Have a good weekend.